Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number 22 of my Manchester United FIFA 16 career mode series. And today, before we get into the first game, we're going to be focusing on a bit more training on our youth players as well, just to change it up instead of just going straight into a game every episode. Three of our youth players get a B rating there, so you can see some very nice development on Guerra as well. The Brazilian striker really needs to be working on the finishing. But now Max Logan, he wants out, and he's one I wasn't 100% sure of. Because I wasn't really training him as well. You can see I'm training these guys, of course. But, yeah, Logan's not training. He's, I think he had maximum of, like, 90 potential. So I really was not sure. I was thinking about to ask you guys. But I will sign him up in this episode, actually, later in the episode. Because you don't know. His potential could be mid-80s. And that's decent. When you think about signing a player, you sign a guy uh, mid-80s. But would you sign him on a free transfer? You probably would, wouldn't you? Because you got him already at the team. Uh, you don't have to actually sign the player for millions. So... I think, I think it's a good move, even though he won't be the best player in our team. I think he can be valuable enough to sell, because if his potential is even low 80s, and he gets to that, if he becomes at least like an 80, 81 rated player, you can make profit of him in the future. And it said it two times, so he must really want a contract. He must. Uh, I felt I had to then. If he said it twice, it won't be too long before he's going to want to leave. And that was really in a short space of time, so... Yeah, uh, that's really important. But also in the league, look, we've got a two-point lead at the minute, and we've got two games in hand to Chelsea. So right now, we look in an amazing position to win the title, but at the same time, we really want to focus strongly in the Champions League and, of course, FA Cup as well. We're in FA Cup uh, semi-final. Uh, we have that coming very, very soon. Uh, which will be against Newcastle United, should be in the next episode. But yeah, we're going to simulate the first game here against Crystal Palace. Uh, obvious win that will be coming up at home, like I said, against these lower teams. Lacazette smashes in two. Philippe Anderson as well can put one home. And yeah, they're doing really, really well. But yes, probably the key thing to focus here is the quarterfinals. And you can see we get a bit of bonus there for the FA Cup. And I just want to show you the objectives, and you can see where we are right now. See, in the semis of the Domestic Cup, uh, reached the semi-final, and we're in the quarters right now. So even though it's only secondary expectations and the league is the main focus, I really want to at least make it to the semis, especially as there's not too many other amazing teams. Uh, there's a couple, but I think, yeah, beatable, and maybe a bit if we get a bit of luck. Yeah, we can have a nice run to the final, potentially. So Max Logan, he actually has some nice physicals. He's actually a pretty quick, um, agile uh, center midfielder, good agility, all of that. Uh, there's Ryan Close as well, who's a pretty good goalkeeper. He's 60 overall uh, without having the highest potential. Scott Nichols uh, newly joins. Another monthly scouting update. We'll see if we'll get anyone decent here. And we do pick up a 15-year-old by the name of George Gibbons. Very strong overall currently for a 15-year-old and then very good maximum potential of 94 and even the minimum about mid 70s is which is very attractive that's what you really want to be getting in scout update so very excited about him a defensive midfield center mid type maybe the next skulls maybe the next carrick uh, will be a very good player for us a good english midfielder but we'll have to see how these guys develop and as Avedo getting an A rating in training every time I see that I get really excited because you know he's going to be very good for us in the future having very good potential uh, but here we actually get an international offer from Spain they're one of the teams I would consider because Spain yeah one of the best national teams but it's not really something I want to consider right now like I want to deserve those offers they come in anyway when you're a big team um, very often. <laughs> I get them almost like every two weeks uh, in this save I've noticed so far. But it's been like that last past years in career mode. Uh, but yeah, not much you can do about it. It just doesn't feel realistic to accept the offer right now because I haven't done anything as a manager really apart from having a good season so far. But you can't write that on your resume, having a good season so far. Um, yeah, they want to see titles. So at least I want to be realistic and see yeah, if I can achieve something. And then I'll have to consider it again. Because even though um, I'll say that, I don't know for sure if I want to manage an international team. I kind of want it to be about Manchester United. I want it to be about the club I'm managing. So there's Max Logan. Interesting, he has low attacking work rate. I'm not sure how good he'll be. Like I talk about, you're yeah, having a good center midfield. Like I just talked about, George Gibbons, 15-year-old, uh, coming through the U squad now. He's a he's going to be more of a higher potential player. But this guy, yeah, maybe if we train him right, he could be a squad player. 
It just depends how he develops. But I do feel he'll probably need a season out on loan. Like I can see Andreas Pereira doing really well. Uh, Jesse Lingard as well getting plus four. Do you think those guys deserve a chance or should I just give them, regardless if they deserve or not, uh, should I give them a chance next season in the first team or out on loan again or even sell because they're getting to a decent overall now where I can make some decent money off of them. But yeah, right now we have to focus on getting into the Senate, Zenit Gamer uh, quarterfinals, Champions League, away from home in the first leg. Uh, we'll be definitely searching for at least one away goal uh, would be great if we could get multiple. We'll be in a very good position going into the second leg. But here's Luke Shaw. He's going to play it through to Juan Mata, who has been an excellent player this season. And it feels like a great start here. One goal early in the game. It just feels like everything is going smoothly right now, winning a lot of games. Even some people have suggested to play on Legendary. Uh, but yeah, just wait till the end of the season to uh, review the season as a whole to see if I have really overachieved as I don't like changing difficulties uh, mid-season uh, but even though yeah world class is probably the best level for me as there's a lot of close games but anyway the game is definitely not over yet uh, going towards half time we defended pretty well after scoring that goal they honestly didn't have too many chances but don't forget they have Hulk and he whips it into Danny they've got some decent players like Hulk Danny's not a bad player either got Axel Witzel in midfield uh, Crisito not a bad defender it's Zuba finds Shatov which sounds like something you do in the toilet but he smashes it into the back of the net just before half time which I'm really disappointed about conceding that late in the half like obviously playing away from home you've got to be careful you don't want to concede a goal because there's a high chance of that and I was really happy we nearly got to half time but you know like injury time goals or just late goals in halves in FIFA are pretty prominent. And now, uh, going towards the last 15 minutes of the game, they're going to whip in across. They're going to find Hulk. He sets, Zu uh, sets up Zuba. I think that's how you say his name. I'm not 100% sure. But the net result is is that they make it 2-1. And they've got the lead. So it's kind of mixed feelings right now. We scored the opening goal. And see how Hulk set that up as well. I'm not sure if he was intending to do that. But you can see Artin Zuba... Uh, scores his fifth goal in the Champions League. So he's scoring uh, fairly regularly so far. Five goals, Champions League. He's been a very good player. So we're looking like losing this game so far. And Philippe Anderson had a late chance. I felt that went really, really close. And don't forget, they've got very good centre-backs as well. Ezekiel Garay, who I really rate as a centre-back. Very, very strong. Uh, Faisal in midfield. And they got the job done. Like I think I underestimated them a little bit. I forgot of you know, the players they have. Obviously, in the back of my head, I knew the players they had. But when you add them all up, they've got a pretty good starting eleven. And even there, at Let's Go Madrid beat yeah Real Madrid. So a lot of these big players are or big teams, sorry, are losing, which is weird. And look at this now. Ryan Close said he wants to terminate his contract, but this is a problem. He never said he wanted to. Like I showed you, like the full clip. I didn't edit it out or anything. He just left. And I'm a bit mad about that because I spent all season training him. And I'm sure you guys have noticed how much he was developing. Yeah, he didn't have the highest potential. Uh, it went down to maybe maximum of 82, wasn't it? 84, 82. And then, yeah, he just left. So, uh, and it didn't show up as a warning. That means I'm scared now. Any of my other youth players are just going to leave at any time. So, yeah, I don't. I want to, like, sign up Raul Azevedo now, Conseil Sao. I can't even sign him up, so he won't leave. But, yeah, I'm really scared, like, someone like Azevedo will just up and leave without a warning because that, yeah, he Ryan Close, yeah, there was no warning for him. Just two times from the other guy who I signed up. But, anyway, I'm here. I'm showing the goal tally. I'm sure you guys want to see this. Alexis Sanchez is absolutely killing it right now. 18 goals in the season. And especially Rooney, 13 goals from playing center midfield a lot of the game. He's played striker a few games this season but as the season's gone on he's really yeah become one of those better center midfielders for us as the captain I really I think he's he, he proves more as a captain or he shows more as a captain in midfield he can dominate the game a bit more opposed to playing striker and this game again it was a pretty defensive game uh, playing away from home Tottenham's got some decent players and surprisingly Harry Kane just came on for whatever reason Adebayor's been starting for them which is unrealistic but that can happen in fever career mode 
uh, for some reasons. But Lacazette is on here. He's going to try and play it across. Then it falls to Daly Blind, and he makes it 1-0 in the 71st minute. It took us a while, but as I said, we're playing away from home against Tottenham. We've got to make sure we were defending well, not like after the first game. Uh, but that does... Uh, beg the question like we conceded a couple goals against Zenit the injury of Laporte people were wondering early in the season why wasn't I playing Smalling or Jones more is because we had a great partnership with Marquinhos and Laporte and that's kind of broken up now you can see a good defensive performance here today Chris Smalling's still a good player but yeah in Champions League you're going to need the best but look at that by Memphis skilling pass three times there and he eventually wins the free kick that was pretty well won so here we're going to have a free kick opportunity uh, Wayne Rooney, I think, will step up to take this as captain. Was looking at some other options. Oh, no, actually, I think Memphis is or Mata. One of those players. I have no idea. One Mata. Yeah, with the left foot. That's what I was looking for, but he curved it too much. One Mata. So we haven't sealed the game yet. But going into injury time now, it looks very, very likely... Tottenham just playing around in the defense. Oh, no, Mason, what are you doing? Lacazette, use the pace, son. Get past. He is maybe uh, try and get past and create another chance. And he skills, and he wins a penalty. Uh, ben Davis had no idea what he was doing there. And at the end, he just fell down. He's like, yeah, I don't even know, mate. <laughs> He's like, look at this. He just tackles him. That's a penalty day, um, penalty every day of the week. And hopefully he'll be able to take it. And at the end, he just falls down there. Maybe trying to fool the referee like he slipped or something. Uh, but no, Lacazette was just too good. Uh, it was coming. It was coming from Lacazette. I did pretty well in skills in this game to win some fouls. And Schweinsteiger uh, finishes in style. And it's good for Schweinsteiger to score goals from penalties because you know he's gone plus two this season. Same with Rooney as well. It's good for them to score a lot of goals, to have good form so they don't drop. So they actually can increase in their overall. So I'm not just doing it because of that reason. They're both good penalty takers. But I suppose it's just a benefit with them performing well. Like generally with older players, if they're not playing, or not performing well, that's when they start to decline. But if they're playing well, scoring goals maybe, uh, defenders, it's another story. Still on the form. If they get good ratings, uh, they'll be able to potentially even improve regardless of their age, unless they're really old, like in their uh, mid-30s. They'll be declining anyway in some attributes, but not yeah, not amazingly. It will be more so their physical attributes uh, they'll be declining in. But anyway, that was the result there, and I was I'm still disappointed. Um, I reckon that's why I didn't score an earlier goal against Tottenham as well because we didn't score for quite a while. Um, or no, because of the yeah, because of the previous result, I was really disappointed about losing the first leg in Zenit. So that begs the question now, as I just show you our current U squad. Leave your thoughts about the talents in there. Who do you think can actually be a starting player? We all know Azevedo is going to be, and also that reason with Ryan Close. I was disappointed because we were training him for the whole season pretty much, and that was like wasted training. I didn't want to let him go. I thought we could sign him up, and he can be just the goalkeeper sitting on the bench for next season and we can sell uh, the likes of Romero and all of that. But um, yeah, that's going to be it for now. But Scott, Scott Nichols, we'll be adding him and also Gibbons. Uh, Gibbons into the training. So we're getting some decent youth guys into the training, of course. Uh, we have like Azevedo and Conceição, uh, Portuguese and Brazilian, respectively, those players. But yeah, Dunn, Nichols. Dunn's a bit lower in the overall, but we'll see how they go here. Uh, pretty solid. Nichols, pretty bad training, but he still gets development. So you get F, but you don't go backwards in training, which is a good thing. You just don't get as much development. So leave your thoughts. Can we do it? Look, Real Madrid losing to Atletico. So they're in a good position do you think at home we can beat them we should be able to but you don't know if they play like they did in last game Zenit it's going to be very hard also doing well in the league four points and two games in hand looking pretty good drop a like on the video see you guys next time